Today on BRS TV Investigates, if you knew you could get 20 times longer life from your RODI unit filters, would it be worth paying twice the cost? Today we find out. Hi, I'm Randy with this Friday's BRS TV Investigates, where we put popular reefing gear, theories, and methods to the test by experimenting on our own tanks so you don't have to experiment on yours. And in today's experiment, we bring out the big guns and testing equipment from the BRS lab with our Hawk CL17 chlorine analyzer, because today we up our game from a chloramine carbon block test we conducted in 2015, where we found that when you use the right tool for the right job, in this case, the BRS universal carbon block, you see 20 times better results. Okay, so fast forwarding five years from our last experiment, not only has water filtration technology been improving and growing, but so has the popularity of using chloramines for water treatment, where at least 30% or potentially as much as half the country's municipal water agencies use chloramine disinfectants for at least part of the year, meaning that more and more reefers' tanks across the nation become exposed to toxic ammonia and chlorine bond that makes up chloramines, and with in that more and more of us should consider how to filter them out as effectively as possible. As we all know, carbon blocks designed for just chlorine don't work well on that chloramine, ammonia, and chlorine bond. But what does that really mean? And what can we expect in terms of performance when you use a carbon block specifically designed for treating chloramines instead of any old chlorine carbon block? Will you actually be able to meaningfully measure how effective using the right tool for the right job can be? And if so, will any performance increase be worth double the cost? Let's find out. Honestly, testing this one was pretty easy with our investment in this Hawk CL17 chlorine analyzer, where we tested our top three most popular carbon blocks with the Matrix CTO 5 micron block, our very own BRS 5 micron chlorine and VOC block, and the most popular BRS universal carbon block. We ran our Minneapolis tap water, which has a 3.5 part per million chloramine level through each of these three carbon blocks at a flow rate of 800 mils per minute, which is the same flow rate you'd find in most 75 gallon per day RO systems with wastewater and product water combined. All we had to do from there was let the Hawk CL17 monitor the chlorine output, where it samples and tests the water every five minutes, and we marked the test as complete once the carbon block hits a 30% breakthrough, meaning that 30% of the chloramines make it through and we consider it failed. I'll say that 30% breakthrough is probably higher than what you may have at home, depending on how many redundant carbon blocks you run. But keep in mind that in this case, when we're talking about 3.5 parts per million chloramines from our tap, 30% breakthrough means that 30% of ammonia and chlorine are getting through the carbon block, potentially affecting the RO membrane and DI performance, and in some cases, even the reef tank directly. As I mentioned, what we're looking for today is the point at which we see a 30% chlorine breakthrough from the 3.5 parts per million chloramines in our Minneapolis tap water, meaning that when the Hawk CL17 reads one part per million chlorine, we will consider them failed. To give you a frame of reference, the Hawk CL17 analyzes a sample water every five minutes, meaning that there are 288 data points in a 24 hour period, which we will highlight for you in the upcoming data. Starting with our very own BRS chlorine and VOC 5 micron carbon block, which is optimized specifically for chlorine, not chloramines, and is rated for treating up to 15,000 gallons, we see that after less than 24 hours, the carbon block fails and crosses over our one part per million threshold or 30% breakthrough. This means that the BRS chlorine and VOC carbon block was only able to effectively process about 252 gallons of tap water total before it failed, allowing 30% or more of the chloramines through. And if we apply that math to a typical 75 gallon per day RODI unit with a three to one wastewater to product water ratio, it was only able to produce 63 gallons of product water. Because this block is designed for chlorine, not chloramines, it would seem that this is not the right tool for the right job, but let's see how the Matrix CTO carbon block performed, which is also optimized for chlorine instead of chloramines. 
Looking at the Hox CL17 data for the Matrix CTO, we see somewhat of a similar performance to the previous BRS carbon block, where an average 30% breakthrough is reached at just under 24 hours, giving this block a marginal performance increase, where at 75 gallon per day flow rate, we see a slight improvement to almost 280 total gallons of water filtered before failing at 30%, or in this case of a common RODI unit with a three to one waste to product water ratio, just 70 gallons of product water. Again, in terms of effectiveness at removing chloramines and getting the best performance possible from our carbon blocks, just like our experiment years ago, it still seems that these two popular filters, both optimized for chlorine alone, rather than the harder to treat ammonia and chlorine bond that make up chloramines, fall short in the performance that most reefers would desire. In fact, I don't know a single reefer who wants to change filters as little as 60 gallons of product water, but most don't even know because a few of us are even testing chlorine output. So within that, let's see how the BRS universal carbon block designed specifically for treating chlorine and chloramines will perform. I'm pretty sure the results will shock you as it did me. Immediately, when you look at the Hawk data for the BRS Universal Carbon Block, we see the 24 hour data point mark well below the one part per million threshold line, so much so that by the time we call the test at a 30% breakthrough, the Universal Carbon Block lasted approximately 42 days in total, or 45 times longer than the Matrix CTO block, and 50 times longer than the BRS Chlorine and VOC Carbon Block. When we look at that data in terms of total gallons of water filtered, the BRS Universal Carbon Block was able to process around 12,936 gallons of tap water, meaning that for the typical three to one ratio of a 75 gallon per day RODI unit, we would be able to produce 3,234 gallons of product water below our one part per million threshold. When we're able to effectively treat upwards of 45 to 50 times more water with one filter over another, I'd say it's pretty darn obvious that we're using the right tool for the right job. And when it comes to the question of is the performance increase in choosing the right carbon block worth double the cost? Undoubtedly, this one gets a full 10 out of 10 in my book. For sure, I'm willing to pay double the cost for 40 to 50 times better performance. And in this case, that cost difference is only nine bucks and will likely pay for itself after the first use alone. If you're following along closely, one thing you might have picked up here is that carbon blocks are not 100% efficient at chlorine and chloramine removal, which is why the best systems use dual blocks, where the first block is simply reducing the load on the second. So if today's results struck a chord with you and you're left wondering how you find out if your tap water is treated with chloramines, I've got two answers for you. First is the simple answer. You could just use a carbon block like the BRS Universal designed for both chlorine and chloramines and not worry about it. Or you could find out for sure by quickly testing your own tap water, which we show you how to do in this special chloramines and carbon blocks playlist over here.